Hello and good morning. We're with Chai Squad. Nick Mazzone here with Javon Drakeford, and we are bringing you our first ever telecast for the NBA with this year's NBA playoffs. As we will be giving you a recap of the series as they just went down over the last couple of days, analyzing and breaking down the remaining series matchups and predictions. So let's start with the Western Conference, the greatest conference of all in the NBA. We got the one seed Golden State Warriors taking on eight seed Houston Rockets. Series is 2 0. Warriors currently lead as the series shifts over to Houston. The Rockets great play in the last two games of the regular season with Harnan's 38 performance and his 41 night performance preserved the Rockets at the capturing the last and final spot in the playoffs. Warriors are what could be called as a dynasty. With all the records they broke this year, like equipping the most wins in a single season at 73 and having the best record in the NBA at 73-9, and nine, and their individual play from Curry as he broke the most threes in a season at 402. He's a great player, right, Javon? Nobody can stop him. Um, so I believe that with their great play, the Warriors are going to sweep the Rockets. How about you, Javon? Thanks, thanks. I also believe that, too. You know, Golden State, you know, they've just been progressing so well as a team. And as Steph Curry keeps making those threes, they're always going to win. Yeah, they're great. So now we're going to go to second seed San Antonio Spurs versus seventh seed Memphis Grizzlies. This series is currently 2 0 as the Spurs destroyed the Grizzlies last night. The Spurs are entering these playoffs as the second best team in the NBA with their veteran talent and the old and amazing, always great coach, Greg the Pop Popovich, who took the Spurs very far in the playoffs, bringing them a lot of NBA championships. While the Grizzlies are entering as the second, as the second worst team in the West and their great big man Zach Randolph and Marcus Gasol leading their team, even with their great talent, their veteran talent, Vince Carter and everybody on there, I don't believe they have what it takes to beat the eternal Spurs. Spurs win in a sweep 4-0. How about your prediction, Javon? Uh, I totally agree with you, Nick. Spurs, they're a very experienced team. I wouldn't say very old, but they're experienced. So, you know, they have a lot to do with this. You know, and, you know, the Grizzlies, what can you say about the Grizzlies? No, no one really knows them. They're not good. Spurs, got you all the way. Thank you, Javon. And I hope they do because they are a great team. Now we're going to go three seed OKC versus six seed Dallas Mavericks. So this series tied at one as game, mo as game three moves over to Dallas. Game two was a nail biter for the Mavericks and those fans out there and their point guard, Felton, who missed the last two ending free throws in the remaining second, giving the Thunder a chance to win. So it goes down like this. Westbrook gets the rebound. He's off to the races. Dishes it off to his buddy, Kevin Durant. Then he misses a bad layup. So then Westbrook has a chance for the putback. He misses it. Then Adams makes it, but unfortunately he didn't get off at the buzzard. War, uh, Mavericks win. Series tied at one. We in Dallas now. Um, then the Thunders entering these playoffs as the most aggressive team in the NBA with their two stars, KD and Russell Westbrook, leading the way, who broke the record for most triple doubles in a season at 18, passing Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan, two of the greats, to play the game. What a milestone for Westbrook. He hopes to use that momentum through the playoffs and take the Thunder team far. And he just announced the other day that KD has a free agent this year. Who knows, he might be going to the Warriors, making that team great once again. So while Dallas is a team who went on a big win streak to end the season, found themselves as the sixth seed entering and are on a fire, but even with their very great talent that Dirk possesses, it won't be enough for Dallas to win the series because of their fact how strong and aggressive those Thunder players are. Thunder wins in five, four to one. How about you, Javon? Who do you got? Well, I do feel like the Dallas will give them a run for the money, but in the end, I do feel that OKC will come out with the win. You know, the Russell and KD are both very clutch. So, you know, I would like to see this happen. I picked Thunders. Thank you, Javon. I have to agree with you with that. I think they're going to take it all the way to the conference final when they're going to lose to the Warriors because nobody's going to beat them. So now we got to go to the four seed LA Clippers versus five seed Portland Trailblazers. So this is going to be a much watched series. Two really good teams led by arguably one of the two best point guards in the league. Let's start with Damian Lillard for the Trailblazers and Chris Paul for the Clippers. 
So they both contain a similar play style. Their play style is really great when they can shoot the ball like they could and pass the ball. They're great overall talent. They got to lead both of their teams. I believe both of these teams will win their games at home, leading them to a pursuit of seven where the Clippers take it at Staples. How about you, Javon? You know, like I said, you know, they will give them a run for the money. But, you know, personally, I am a, uh, you know, Chris Paul fan as well as Blake Griffin. So I feel like they're a good tandem together. So I feel like, you know, the Clippers will, will take this all the way. Thank you, Javon. Now let's go to the Eastern Conference. So we got one seed Cleveland Cavaliers versus eight seed Detroit Pistons. Wow, this could be a great series with LeBron and Kyrie. The Cavs are entering into these playoffs as the hottest team from the East and look to try to win it all this year when last year they lost to historic Warriors in the finals. With one of the greatest guards in the game, Kyrie Irving, and the arguably one of the greatest players in the NBA and one of the most aggressive, LeBron James. The chemistry that those two possess is what is going to be likely the Cavs to move far in the playoffs. Now the Pistons on the other end are entering these playoffs as the worst team by record in the East, but could put up a good fight like they did in Game 1. I don't see them putting up a fight even with their great big man Andrew Drummond, though, but who knows how that series is going to go down. I got Cavs winning in a sweep 4-0. How about you, Javon? I agree with you, Nick. Uh, you know, LeBron and, LeBron and Kyrie, unstoppable tandem right there. You know, it kind of reminds me of what LeBron and D-Wade did when he used to play for the Heat, but, you know, back going back to the Cavs, that was a great step for him. I, I do feel like Cavs will take it all the way. Yeah, I have to agree with you definitely on that. They were a great tandem in Miami and led them all his four years in Miami to the finals and got those two rings. So LeBron is definitely a must-watch player when these playoffs continue. So now let's go to the two-seed Toronto Raptors versus seven-seed Indiana Pacers. This series tied at one. The Pacers are coming into these playoffs with a big burst of wins to end the season, find themselves as the second-worst team in the East with the help of Paul George returning this season when last year was out for a season due to an injury. The Raptors had a tough game one of the series when their two stars couldn't shoot a barrel. I mean, they were breaking everything. They, were, they could have built a house with all those damn bricks. But now they responded in game two as they took that one. So now series tied at one. Those great two chemistry between Lowry and DeRozan, I believe they'll get past the Pacers win their first round that they never were able to accomplish. Raptors win in five. So what's your prediction on that great series there, Javon? Well, I don't know too much about the Raptors or the Pacers, but I do know that Drake will support the Toronto Raptors because, you know, he was from Canada. But even then, I still, I still think that the Pacers will win it all. Thank you, Javon, and I'm going to... We go with the Pacers? Yeah. The Pacers? Yeah. Nah, I can't do with that. I got to go with the Raptors. But Paul George is a great player. He's going to put up a fight. So now let's go to three-seed Miami Heat versus six-seed Charlotte Hornets. This series is 1-0. Actually, tonight's game two on NBA TV for your Heat fans if you want to watch it and your Hornets fans. Well, the Heat... Oh, my God. Blew out those Hornets game one. And the Hornets are trying to put that behind them and take care of business in game two and go to Charlotte in a series tied at one. This will mark the first time the Hornets have made the playoffs under Michael Jordan's ownership. And they hope to play tremendous in front of one of the greats of all time. The only problem is the Hornets don't really have a star that can push them all the way. So... Now let's go to the Heat. The Heat are entering these playoffs in a great position with the addition of Joe Johnson in the middle of the season and their veteran talents of Wade and Bosch. Now we did hear that Bosch is hurt, but maybe he'll shake that off and get ready as, this, as the playoffs progress and the Heat makes a big run. So, And they also know a little something about hosting the NBA championship. So I believe the great talent on the roster of the Heat that they possess will be a tough first round for the Hornets. Heat wins in a sweep 4-0. How about you, Javon? 
I agree with you, Nick. You know, like I said, the, the Heat has, you know, a lot of experience, especially with LeBron, you know, winning, getting them two rings or whatever. I feel like a lot of people underestimate Bosch, but he will come as hard as he would any other seat, any other game. Even maybe even harder since the playoff game. You know, him and D Wade, you know, they're really they're really great together, you know, and of course all the other players, but um you know, him, Wade and Bosch are definitely a good lookout. Yep. Definitely have to agree with you with that, Javon. They're definitely a big lookout. So now let's go to our last and final game of the Easter Conference with four seed Atlanta Hawks and five seed Boston Celtics. So Hawks and Celtics are the main, well, what's the main matchup of this game? Well, let's start with the guard play. Jeff Teague for the Hawks, Isaiah Thomas for the Celtics. The Celtics, everybody knows, is an amazing team when the playoffs go on. If you look back in history, they're great. That's all you can say about the Celtics. But I believe this is going to be a back-and-forth series. Both of those teams are going to take their home wins until we go back to transition back to Atlanta for Game 7. Hawks win in 7. Now let's go to Javon for the final and last prediction of the first round NBA coverage. I agree with you, Nick. I feel like Hawks are going to take it all. Teague is a very, very good player. And, you know, they're kind of really lucky to have him because, you know, he's kind of the star player. And, uh, you know, he goes he's pretty, pretty good, you know. So I feel like he'll lead the team into the wins. And I think he'll take it over Boston Celtics. Definitely have to agree with you with that. And thank you for watching our first telecast of this NBA playoffs. Make sure to tune in to our next telecast.